पढ़ाता है सुने तो आई वुड लाइक द पीपल टू नो यू हैव गिवन अस रियली द ऑलमोस्ट द फाउंडेशन ऑफ योर टॉक टुनाइट एंड प्रोबेबली योर आंसर्स ना बाकी पुमायग ang Pilipinas na umatras tayo. And I would like to know if you know what drove Aquino to reach that decision to order the Navy to retreat. Yun daw ang kasunduan na <coughs> na, na uh, natamo ng dalawang panig sa ilalim ng mediation ng Amerika, Mr. President. Kaya dapat siguro uh, si Albert Del Rosario malaman sa kanya kung sino ba ang bilang Secretary of Foreign Affairs noon, sino ba ang humingi ng tulong ng Amerika. Si Ambassador Quisha ba? Uh, si ang Ambassador ng Pilipinas sa Washington noon o ang mismong palasyo, si Presidente Aquino, hindi natin alam eh. Ngayon, dahil doon sa pangyayaring yun eh, nagkakwan tayo na nalugi tayo. Dahil umatras tayo, ay China, hindi nila mapaalis doon sa lugar na yun. Time for, for all of these things to correct itself, maybe. Ang ano ko sir, kasi ako yung sinisisi nila na bakit ko raw, I will, I will not forcefully do everything to go to the United Nations to ask the body for help. One is that I am a realist sir. And if this question is as big as the Philippine, West Philippine Sea, this will eventually reach the Security Council. Mr. President, in the first place, you were elected by the Filipino people to be the leader of this country. Nobody else can frame the foreign policy of the country except the president of this country. That is true to us and true to other countries. Not even the Supreme Court can interfere with your foreign policy. That's uh, the highest political act of a president. And uh, I wonder why people keep talking without understanding this system. No, no one else can uh, uh, frame or formulate the foreign policy of the Philippines except President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. That's what... Not, uh, not, not Carpio, Albert del Rosario, or Juan Ponce Enrile. It's only, there is only one person. That's the President of the Philippines. I will not uh, bother you with any other statements except to say that I would like to present to you the one of the most respected minds of our generation, Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. Sir, it's your turn. Salamat, Mr. President, sa inyong anyaya sa akin na dumalo dito sa inyong tanggapan sa Malacanang sa araw na ito. At uh, ako'y uh, nagpapasalamat sapagkat uh, inigyan niyo ako na pagkakataon at uh, na ba, mapakinggan ninyo ang aking damdamin tungkol dito sa usapin natin sa West Philippine Sea. Sa totoo lang, uh, Mr. President, hinawakan din namin yung problema na yan nung panahon ni Presidente Marcos. Pero noon eh, mas uh, madali ang trabaho namin sapagkat uh, hindi kagaya ngayon, ang China ay hindi pa masyadong malakas noon ang kanyang puwersa. Wala silang Navy, 
Wala pa sila dyan sa West Philippine Sea, kaya madali ang aming trabaho noon. Ngayon, sa inyong panahon, medyo mahir- mahirap ang kaitayuan ninyo. At uh, <coughs> binabati ko kayo sa inyong uh, approach dito sa ating usapin sa West Philippine Sea. Hindi natin kailangan ang mainit na ulo dyan sa bagay na yan sapagkat yan ay malaki ang kaugnayan niyang usapin na yan hindi lamang sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas kundi sa seguridad ng ating bansa ng ating mga kababayan at lalong lalo na ah, itong lupain natin na minana natin sa Espanya at sa Amerika kaya po ako ay eh, Uh, nagagalak sapagkat pinakinggan ninyo ako at uh, pinangangako ko sa inyo na kung kailangan ninyo ang serbisyo ko, gratis et amore, para sa bayan, para sa inyo, para sa ganun ay makatulong sa inyo, Mr. President. Salamat po. I'd like to thank you for this rare uh, privilege given to me. Uh, by you, uh, accommodating me and the Filipino people. You can proceed now, sir, with your narrative for tonight. Uh, alam niyo itong uh, clan, uh, South China Sea, ma- masalimuot na usapin dito sapagkat ang China ay kaya gumagalaw dyan sa lugar na yan sapagkat uh, nauukol yung bagay na yan, yung lugar na yan sa kanyang katayuan bilang isang bansa dito sa ating planeta. Pag may mga ibang uh, bansa na makahawak niyan, lugar na yan, ay eh palagay ko mahihirapan ng China sapagkat 80% ng kanilang enerhiya at pati na ang kanilang mga pagkain sa China ay dumadaan dyan. At uh, sa, uh, yan ay importante sa kanilang siguridad. Ganon din ang Hapon. Lahat ng kanilang pangangailangan na enerhiya, 60% ng kanilang enerhiya dumadaan din dyan. Ganon din ang uh, Taiwan at lalong-lalo na ang South Korea. Kaya dapat... Uh, kailangan na friendly ang approach natin dyan. Hindi hard, assertive, and aggressive approach. Sapagkat kung uh, hindi tayo magkakaunawan sa China, ay madadamay ang interest ng ating mga kababayan, ang ating ekonomiya, pati na rin ang ating siguridad dito sa usapin na ito. Mr. President, ako po bilang isang Pilipino at isang uh, nanungkulan din, ako po ay eh, anumang oras kung kailangan nyo ang aking tulong sa mga anuman na bagay sa ating bansa, gratis at amore, tawagin lang ninyo ako po. Sir, ang totoo niyan, ang bayan ang nangangailangan sa inyo hanggang ngayon. Ako, Second ang ako doon sa linya, sir. At, salamat, uh, salamat, Mr. President. Sir. Salamat. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can now, uh, you can now proceed with the narrative you gave us. And if you can kindly uh, relate to the, to the nation, what you told me in a conference just before. Kailangan, we, Mr. We, President, kung uh, uh, maharin ninyong payagan na imungkahi ko ito, dapat ang bansa nating Pilipinas sa inyong liderato ay gawin na malakas ang ating kakayahan na manindigan ng sarili sapagkat dito sa mundo na ito, ngayon, hindi tayo maaaring umasa sa ating mga kaalyado kahit na sila na ang pinakamalakas na puwersa sa ating planeta sapagkat 
Marami din silang mga problema sa kanilang buhay, sa kanilang bansa. Marami pa silang problema sa panglabas. Kaya dapat palakasin din natin ang ating ekonomiya, ang ating pwersa militar at naintindihan siguro yan ng China sapagkat yan din ang ginagawa nila para sa ganun ay sila ay manatili na isang bansa na malaya. Kaya Mr. President, I congratulate you for your effort to see to it that the country will survive in these critical times. Hindi dapat gamitin ang mainit na kaisipan na kagaya ng mga kritiko natin. Dapat balance lang ang approach natin at mahinahon. Dad, what you said inside, you say again. Huh? Oh, sir, if you if you can kindly relate to us now uh, what the this is uh, the problem of the West Philippines. Alam, alam mo alam, alam no po ninyo. Nung ako ay nasa Senado, Senate President ako noon. Eh inimbita ako ni uh, President Aquino isang hapon doon sa Palacio, doon sa cabinet room. Nung dumating ako doon, eh, ako ang unang dumating. Pangalawa, dumating si Senator Trillanes. Pareho kaming senador noon. Eh, <coughs> meron siyang ibinubulong sa akin na treason, treason. Di ko naintindihan yung gusto niyang sabihin. Pagkatapos nung dumating na si Albert Del Rosario, kalihim ng Department of Foreign Affairs, at kasama niyang presidente, umupo sila. Binibriefing kami ni Del Rosario tungkol doon sa nangyari sa Scarborough, na Seoul. At uh, mukhang nagkaroon ng alitan ang pangkat natin at ang pangkat ng China doon. Ngayon, uh, sinabi ni Trillanes na nagpunta siya sa China at uh, Kinausap niya yung mga namumuno sa China tungkol doon sa bagay na sa problema na yun. Ako naman, bilang presidente ng Senado noon, tinanong ko sa kanya, sino, anong, anong karapatan mo na nagpunta sa China? Yung ba, ikusang loob mo lamang ang nagpunta roon. Sabi niya, hindi. Nagpunta ako doon, may authority ako. Sino ang nag-auto sa inyo pumunta roon? Pagkatapos sumagot si Presidente Aquino, sabi niya, ako sa, ang nag-utos sa kanya. Sinabi ko kay Presidente Aquino na dahan-dahan, Mr. President, medyo masalimut yata yan sapagkat hindi natin alam ko an alam ko anong mga pinag-usapan ni, ni Trillanes doon sa mga nakausap niya sa China. Kaya mag-iingat tayo. Pagkatapos noon, Si Secretary Del Rosario, binigyan ako ng sulat ni Ambassador Brady natin sa China na nagre-reklamo na itong si Trillanes ay uh, binabay pa siya. Yun pala, si Trillanes ay pasok at labas sa China na tila hindi na dumadaan sa immigration dahil Inuutosan yata siya ni Presidente Aquino. Kaya sinabi, sinabihan ko sila na dapat huwag natin gawin yun sapagkat bansa ang nauukol dito. Nagkaroon ng mediation. Ngayon, ang mediator pala doon ay ang Amerika. Ang question ngayon na hindi ko masagot at hanggang ngayon hindi ko alam kung sino ang kumingi ng tulong ng Amerika. Ang Amerika ang nag-mediate. Nagkaroon ng kasunduhan dahil sa mediation ng Amerika na umatras bawat China at uh, Pilipinas doon sa area ng Scarborough. Sinunod ng Pilipinas yung kasunduhan sa ilalim ng mediation ng Amerika pero ang China ay hindi sumunod. Ngayon ang question ko, kung ang Amerika ang naging mediator Unang question, sino 
ang humingi ng tulong ng Amerika. Pangalawa, bakit nung hindi tinupad ng China ang kasunduan, no matras din siya, bakit hindi man lang pinagsabihan ng Amerika ang China na tuparin niya yung kasunduan? Ang impression ko bagay, parang ginamit lang tayo doon sa bagay na yun. Ano man na interest ang nauukol para sa uh, Amerika, eh, hindi ko alam. Pero ganon ang impression ko. Hanggang ngayon, hindi ko masagot kung bakit yung mediator natin ay hindi tayo tinulungan para to, tumupad naman ng China para doon sa kasunduan na umatras sila. Kaya ngayon, sila ang nakapwesto doon. Tayo na wala. Yan po ang ang palatag. Senator, I, uh, I would like uh, the people to know uh, you have given us really the almost the foundation of your talk tonight and probably your answers. Na bakit pumayag ang Pilipinas na umatras tayo? And I would like to know if you know what drove Aquino to reach that decision to order the Navy to retreat. Yun daw ang kasunduan na, <coughs> na, na uh, natamo ng dalawang panig sa ilalim ng mediation ng Amerika, Mr. President. Kaya dapat siguro uh, si Albert Del Rosario malaman sa kanya kung sino ba ang bilang Secretary of Foreign Affairs noon, sino bang humingi ng tulong ng Amerika? Si Ambassador Quisha ba? Na siya ang Ambassador ng Pilipinas sa Washington noon? O ang mismong palasyo, si Presidente Aquino? Hindi natin alam eh. Ngayon, dahil doon sa pangyayaring yun eh, nagkakwan tayo na nalugi tayo. Dahil umatras tayo ay China, hindi nila mapaalis doon sa lugar na yun. Ang UN para ma 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 malunasan yung sigalot na yan para sa atin, palagay ko kahit na may resolusyon ang UN, eh hindi naman maipapatupad ng UN yung resolusyon nila. Wala silang police force eh. Wala namang uh, world government na kagaya ng istruktura natin sa ating bansa. Meron tayong hukuman, meron tayong polis, na kung merong kailangan na uh, usapin tungkol sa hostesya, magpupunta ka sa hukum, hindi ganyan sa level ng mga bansa. Sa mga level ng mga bansa, eh, ang nanatili dyan eh, kung ano ang kakayahan mo kontra sa kabila, yun lang. It is uh, what operates within in the level of nations, Mr. President, is what they call the law of nature, the law of force and nothing more. That is international law. That is what I've been telling uh, uh, at least uh, our country. And, uh, I, said I was frank enough uh, early in the early days, and I said that might makes it right. And we are not unfortunately on the side of might so uh, we cannot do anything because we cannot uh, be in parity in force and uh, in all so we have to talk just talk and talk until such time uh, by the grace of God if there is an opportune time for for all of these things to correct itself maybe ang ano ko sir kasi Ako yung sinisisi nila na bakit ko raw, I will, I will not forcefully do everything to go to the United Nations to ask the body for help. One is that I am a realist, sir. 
And if this question is as big as the Philippine, West Philippine Sea, this will eventually reach the Security Council. Mr. President, in the first place, you were elected by the Filipino people to be the leader of this country. Nobody else can frame the foreign policy of the country except the president of this country. That is true to us and true to other countries. Not even the Supreme Court can interfere with your foreign policy. That's uh, the highest political act of a president. And uh, I wonder why people keep talking without understanding this system. No, no one else can uh, uh, frame or formulate the foreign policy of the Philippines except President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. That's what not, uh, not, not Carpio, Albert del Rosario, or Juan Ponce Enrile. It's only, there is only one person. That's the President of the Philippines. That's what I've been telling them, sir. What could be more uh, genuine uh, to a title, to a right, to a claim than the paper itself of the arbitration? Well, but our claim springs from, from the onclos, Mr. President. It was simply interpreted by the arbitral body in accordance with the dictum of onclos. Of course, the, apart from Onclus, earlier we got involved in the West Philippine Sea because of uh, the discovery of Thomas Cloma during the regime of President Carlos P. Garcia. And uh, that discovery during the presidency of Carlos Garcia, nothing was done about it. And also during the time of Dadong Makapagal as president of the Philippines because they were busy about something else in the country. And uh, during the time of President Marcos, Cloma ceded his rights over freedom land, that was the name given to that area by Cloma, to the Republic of the Philippines. That was the first uh, source of our claim to the area. Then Onclus came and it was expanded into a greater area because the Onclus gave us exclusive economic rights, what we call in civil law, Joseph Tuari right over a, a, an area of a body of water, including its uh, bottom and all the fish, fish and uh, uh, wealth that the, you can discover there, exclusive economic right for our country. But that is on the, on, on the, t on the assumption that we can protect it. And a president of the Philippines, as a person, without a strong navy and air force, cannot enforce that right no matter what you 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 how much you want to enforce it in the same way you and can issue a resolution but they cannot enforce it yes sir that's right and uh, I, I said I was uh, quite a bit uh, askance uh, about their insistence to go back to the United Council even if it will result into a, 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 maybe not a shooting war, but a critical issue of security for the world and for everybody, eventually it would reach uh, uh, the Security Council. The Security Council has five permanent members. Two of them are allies, China and Russia. Each one has a veto power. I said if I started the violence now, I said the uh, UN will intervene. And the Security Council, uh, America, China, Britain, France, and uh, uh, the United States. Mr. Well, President, well, you are only you are answerable only to history for your foreign policy. Yes, sir. 
only history will judge you. And I think that uh, history will judge you very well. If I were in your place, uh, I, would, uh, I would have done the same thing. What else can a president of this country do under our present national circumstance? You can shout, you can beat your breast, you can raise your fist without any backup. It's just, that is just noise. Sir, uh, in the early days of my administration, I announced a change of the direction of our foreign policy from being pro-Western to just neutral. Just uh, playing it safe in the meantime because it, uh, there might be really a trouble a brewing. So, nandito lang ako sa gitna. That's the reason why I, I went to China and I was prudent enough to bring along my cabinet members at the time, early days. Some of them are now here. Mga, yung mga military, sir, uh, General Anyo was then a uh, general uh, chief of staff. Uh, Delphine Lorenzana, Secretary Lorenzana was uh, uh, my dear in the... Pati marami, karamaraming Esperon was there, sir. So just to make sure. And pointedly, I said to uh, President Xi Jinping, in front of everybody, two panels uh, opposite each other. Sabi go, Mr. President, uh, there was uh, a long discussion, but I said, Mr. President, uh, I know that uh, we have conflicting claims, but, uh, you know, I have uh, plans of going to the West Philippine Sea to dig my oil. At tapos, sir, ang sagot ni President Xi Jinping, almost in whisper, Parang ganito, sir, magkaharap. Sabi niya, in front of the witnesses that I brought along, just to make sure that I will be correct all the time, be prudent about it. Sabi ko, uh, magdig ako ng oil. Sabi niya, in whisper, you know, Mr. President, please do not do that. He said, please, please do not do that. You will just shout up or you know, we have a new beginning here, new friendship found. But if you do that, he said, he said in the, um, the almost whisper, there will be trouble. So, uh, toto lang, Mr. President. Ito ay sinasabi ko, hindi dahil ako ay anti-American. Hindi ako po ay kwan. Hindi anti-American. Sa mga Amerikano, marami akong kaibigan, at uh, meron akong apo na Amerikana. Ngayon, iba yung mga, uh, mga American citizens sa kanilang gobyerno eh. Sa kanila yung gobyerno nila, national interest palagi ang pinagbabatayan nila ng galaw nila sa uh, larangan ng relasyon ng mga bansa. Sa totoo lang, Sa karanasan ko bilang Secretary of National Defense nung panahon ni Presidente Marcos, hindi natin maasahan ang Amerika sa mga ganitong usapin. Nung Secretary of Defense ako po, nung kasagsagan ng Vietnam War ng Amerika, humihingi kami ng delivery ng Amerika ng 2,500 Armalites. Dalawang libo, limang daan na armalites lang po ang kailangan namin doon para labanan namin ang mga nanggugulo sa ating bansa dito sa Luzon at ganoon din sa Mindanao. Sapagkat noon, ang mga baril lang namin ay carbine at garan. At ang aming puwersa noon ay 48,000 lang po ang kabuuan ng sundalo natin. Nandyan na ang PC, nandyan na ang Air Force, nandyan na ang Army, nandyan na ang Navy, nandyan na ang Coast Guard. Ngayon, pumunta kami ni Presidente Marcos doon sa Clark Field. Isang araw, tanghali yun. Dahil dumating yung si Admiral Gaylord ng 7th Fleet na nakabase sa Hawaii at hinihingi namin 
ang delivery ng 2,500 uh, Armalite para sa uh, ar- militar natin. Ay sabi niya sa akin na hindi low priority kayo sapagkat kailangan namin ng baril sa Vietnam. Sabi namin, eh meron kami problema dito eh kailangan namin ha, ang ipinangako ninyo. Sa madalit salita po, hindi kami nakakuha. Kaya dahil dun sa karanasan na yun, bilang sekretaryo ng kalihim ng Department of Defense noong mga panahon na yun, sinabi, may minungkahi ko kay Presidente Marcos kung ganito ang trato sa atin ng Amerika, nandito ang base militar nila. May kasunduan tayo under the Mutual Defense Treaty. Hindi tayo matulungan sa 2,500 Armalite. Mabuti pa, bumili na rin tayo ng baril natin pag bayarin natin sila ng renta sa base militar nila at yung renta nila ang pamili natin. Huwag na tayong aasa na ibibigyan nila sa atin. At dahil doon, ang ginawa ko para magkaroon kami tayo ng baril, kinausap ko si Dr. Go Keng Sui ng Singapore. He was my counterpart. He was the Minister of, Pub- of uh, uh, Defense of Defense Minister of Singapore. Meron silang cold factory doon noong araw. Humingi ako ng baril sa kanya. Nakakuha kami ng mga old model ng cold. Wala pa yung kagaya ng mga Armalite ngayon. Noon eh, meron binobomba para kung nag-i-stoppage yung mga baril. We were able to do, uh, get 10,000 uh, pieces of lo- long arms from Singapore. And uh, I got the ammunition from Taiwan. Uh, kaibigan ko si General Wego, kapatid ni Chang Chinko. He was the head of the arsenal of Taiwan. And I was able to get the bullets from him. Kaya ang kapalit naman noon na binigay namin sa Singapore na pabor ay eh, nag istasyon sila ng isang squadron ng kanilang Air Force dito sa Clark natin at uh, for training purposes. Kaya na naagapan namin ang siguridad ng bansa dito sa Luzon at sa Mindanao noong mga panahon na yun. Kaya kung aasa tayo sa tulong ng Amerika, lalo na ngayon, magulo sila sa Amerika at marami silang problema. Nandiyan ang problema sa Gaza at, is, at uh, Israel at uh, Palestine, Palestine ngayon. At ganun din, umaalma ang uh, Russia. Eh, palagay ko, kahit napupunta tayo sa UN, mag ng resolusyon ang uh, UN. Eh, aasahan ng UN na magpapairal nun eh, Amerika din, o yung may mga kakayahan. At palagay ko, sa panahon na ito, eh, walang bansa na pwedeng makaya ang China. Kaya tama yung posture ninyo na kausapin ang China dito sa bagay na ito. Huwag gagamitin ng emosyon at init ng ulo. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I would like to explain to the nation that uh, sometimes I must be, I must admit that I am, I am harsh with my, my, my words. Eh, that is my nature and I cannot change it at this time. Gusto nilang ipasa sa akin yung uh, to attribute uh, to me against me yung pagkakamali nila. Siguro kailangan malaman natin kung si Samba ga- nang galing yung koneksyon ni Trillanes sa Beijing. Paano siya nagkaroon ng koneksyon doon? Ni- mismo ako. Naging guest ako ng Beijing. Wala akong koneksyon na kagaya ni Trillanes. Paano siya nag- ka- nagkaroon? ng koneksyon na gano'n na pwede niyang lapitan ang mga pinuno ng China nung panahon na yun. Pati Presidente Aquino, palagay ko, wala siyang gano'ng koneksyon. Bakit si Trillanes 
ay nagkaroon ng koneksyon na ganoon. Yun ang isang misteryo na hanggang ngayon dapat malaman kung anong kasagutan. Ah, uh, you know, I do not demean or uh, uh, belittle our armed forces. Ang, ang akin lang, sir, it is really a wonder to me why, of course, it's only President uh, Aquino who can answer it, why he chose a military man to do the back channeling. And the problem is it was uh, uh, so, so secretive, almost a uh, sobrosa type of negotiation that was kept uh, secret. Now you can name the people, do the, you, you can, we can insist on uh, knowing the people, pero yung tataguan mo sir yung anong developments doon. And this is really my $64 question to everybody. The mystery, Mr. President, to me was why Trillanes? And not some, someone else. From the military, from why? the foreign service. Why Trillanes? Of, of the senators who were incumbent at the time, why was Trillanes selected as the negotiator for Aquino? And where did Trillanes get the influence over some authorities in Beijing in those days? Yes, sir. I understand that, that he traveled to me. He traveled to China 16 times, and uh, during his last visit, the, the 16th vis visit, short deserve but uh, two days after we maybe, lost this Scarborough shore. Maybe he should explain to the nation uh, how he got that kind of an influence to be able to reach out to the higher ups in China. Not just anybody can talk to any member of the Politburo of China. He must have been a very influential person in China to be able to do his work as he did. And how did he acquire that influence? I, that is a mystery to me, Mr. President. So with me, sir, I would say. So... Uh Dapat, uh, one of these days, maybe the Filipino people should demand uh, the truth. They should if ask. It, they cannot get it from the mouth of Trillanes, because uh, maybe it would be a self-preservation thing, then at least uh, some people in the foreign ministry, especially uh, our ambassador at the time, uh, Ambassador uh, Brady, can explain, because... Uh, as, uh, as I understand from you earlier, there, uh, he, he was not allowed by Trillanes to take notes. Alam mo kasi, sir, ganito yan para sa mamalaman ng mga taong Pilipino. Kagaya ngayon, nandito kami. Sa likod natin, yun yung mga stenog yung ambassadors, pati mga stenographers, kumukuha ng record. So, maybe uh, I learned from you earlier na Trillanes uh, did not allow him to take notes. Ang, 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 ang problema ko dyan, Mr. President, bakit si Trillanes, pangalawa, bakit binaypas niya yung embahada natin sa Beijing? At sa impresyon ko, pati si Del Rosario, nakalihim ng foreign affairs noon, ay eh, binaypas din niya. Wala, walang kamuang-muang si si Kwani, si Del Rosario doon sa meeting na yun na tungkol doon sa pinag-usapan sa Beijing. Ngayon, at nasa na yung sulat naman ni Brady dahil binigyan ako ni Del Rosario ng kopya, nawala na, marami kasi akong record, wala na akong panahon na tumingin doon sa aking mag-, mag lungkat doon sa aking mga records, eh, nasa kanya yun. Copy lang yung, yung binigay sa akin eh. O, oh, bakit wala sa Department of Foreign Affairs yung kasulatan na yun? Dapat nandun yun. On Fi files. Official no. record yun eh. Sure. You're correct, sir. Uh, yun nga ang problema natin. Uh, there is a monkey wrench in arriving at the truth. 
And that is really what happened in the negotiations and why uh, oh, bakit nag tayo? What prompted uh, Aquino or upon whose advice? Because I do not think that President Aquino would just decide on his own uh, when he knows nothing about it, even the negotiations. So, Mr. Consino, who prompted him to arrive at that decision? Tayo na onse, pero yung namag-itan between the Philippines and China, eh hindi naman yun talaman lang sinabihan yung China na, oy, ito pa rin mo naman yung kasunduan, sapagkat yung Filipinas si sumunod eh. Bakit hindi ka sumusunod? Wala eh, walang nangyaring ganun eh. Unang-una, kung basahin mo yung def na Mutual Defense Treaty, ang uh, sinasakop lang nun uh, kasunduan natin sa Amerika ay kung may atake sa ating mga fighter planes o ating mga pang barkong pandirigma sa Pasifiko, saka lang pwede natin gamitin yon. Pero ang sinabi ng Amerika sa amin nung pinag-uusapan namin na namin yung uh, amendment ng military basis agreement, revision ng military basis agreement. Si Kissinger mismo ang kinusap ko at saka si Rumsfeld who was my counterpart. And later on, Armitage also when he was here to negotiate for the extension of the military basis. Nasabi nila, Yung West Philippine Sea or South China Sea is not a part of the treaty area of the Mutual Defense Treaty. Kung may mangyari sa West Philippine Sea between China and the Philippines, eh, hindi, in, hindi natin magagamit yung Mutual Defense Treaty. Although, pagkausap mo ang mga officials ng Amerika, sasabihin na, ah, we will help you, we will protect you, we will come to your rescue. But when the nitty-gritty is there, hindi natin maasahan yan. Kaya, dapat, kausapin natin ng Amerika kung gusto nilang baguhin yung mutual defense treaty. So, para kagaya ng NATO, automatic action ang gagawin nila kung talaga na pagkaroon tayo ng problema sa mga ibang bansa dito sa ating kapaligiran. Palagay ko, ah, hindi sila papayag yan. Uh, I don't know uh, what, what I said. I, I'm just a few months away from my presidency. But I'm really greatly worried about this uh, situation because uh, there will be a time that we will be looking towards the resources of the South China Sea or the Fili West Philippine Sea. There will be a time that... Uh, itong oil, gas, and everything, which uh, you said into run into billions, I do not have the figures, uh, they might take an interest on that. And uh, that is the time when I said that uh, uh, there will be a real problem. Not so much now. I might uh, maybe keep silent about it. Alam mo, Mr. President, pinag-uusapan natin talaga dyan. At uh, ang, bata, ang uh, bottom line nito ay eh, kayamanan. Eh. Yes. Ang kayamanan na uh, nandyan sa West Philippines na yan, according to the best estimate, or, uh, or rather the proven reserves of uh, oil and natural gas sa West Philippines is uh, nine... 7 billion barrels of uh, crude and 900 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. That's a very big quantity. That is already proven. It's there. Ang estimate ng China, kaya ganyan ang galaw ng China dyan, ay there is a potential of 130 billion barrels of oil in the West Philippine Sea. So with that amount or 
volume of wealth to be harvested. I doubt whether China will easily uh, bow to anybody without asserting its rights over the area. Apart from the fact that to China, West Philippine Sea is a very strategic route. If, you, if that area is closed or controlled by America, Japan, or any other country, China in two months will wither away as a nation. They will have famine, riots, they will have no economy because 80% of their energy passes through the Strait of Malacca, through the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea to China. Or even Japan will suffer also if that is uh, controlled by someone else. That's why China is very careful not to antagonize Japan because Japan has the capability. It's, uh, it's the number two naval power on, on this planet at the moment, second to America. And they have nuclear capability because the moment China controls the South China Sea, they can uh, isolate South Korea and uh, Taiwan and, and uh, Japan. So the, it's a very delicate balance in this area. Anna Moser, I really see the problem, a serious problem in our hands. And uh, it's uh, quite comforting, comforting me, to me na malaman ko na ano ang totoo from your mouth. Uh, because sabi ko, uh, to me, you're the most authoritative uh, Senate President ka noon. Alam mo ito lahat at dapat malaman ng taong bayan. Because hindi naman ako, I'm not talking about politics, I'm just talking about the, well, the behavior of some na tinitwist nila. So it could be just, I said, uh, they want me to correct what is wrong. Ang problema niyan is uh, the wrong started from them. So, ginagawa akong, well, uh, sabi ni Kwisa, niloko tayo. Uh, eh, kasi loko-loko ka. Bakit nagpaloko kayo? Uh, ito, uh, I hope that uh, we would be able to weather any trouble with China uh, now and in the future for as long as it is very dangerous for us from my, to from go into uh, a from kind where of... where I sit, Mr. President, I think uh, you will be able to handle it well in the, in the manner you are doing it now. Because uh, what do we... What, we lose more if we antagonize China. We have no choice except to negotiate with China. If we, assuming that no, we, there's no dispute about our uh, uh, right to uh, right over exclusive economic uh, exploitation of our West Philippine Sea asset, still we need the foreign money to make it a source of wealth for the country. Now. Our choice at that point will be either go to Europe and get uh, technology and capital to uh, exploit, explore and exploit the uh, energy resources of our uh, economic zone in West Philippine Sea or deal directly with China. China is one of the best uh, energy explorer now on the planet. In fact, I, 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 I read some books which, which says that uh, China now in engineering almost surpassed uh, MIT in uh, the quality of their uh, graduates. Massachusetts so Institute of they are very advanced already. So I think that uh, we, uh, as far as I'm concerned, 
we will not gain anything by antagonizing China. I'm not pro-China. I'm not. I do not have any interest in China. <laughs> but uh, as a Filipino, I will take this position to protect my countrymen, to protect our core territory, to protect our economy. Maybe we can bet get better by talking with China instead of being aggressive. Uh, I do not know if it was made clear to us uh, at that time, but in one of my many visits to China, uh, there was a, a talk, but it was not really translated into a concrete agreement that maybe uh, China and the Philippines uh, can exploit the resources in the seabeds uh, together. I, I, I was, this was not uh, clear to me at the time. It might be into the present uh, agreements now below, but as an agreement between heads of state, uh, wala akong, there was no guarantee. Uh, it's the companies uh, down below. But you know, uh, when it comes to uh, a matter of the interest of a country, you can uh, always disregard everything down, and you have to protect Mr. yours first. Mr. President, uh, China is uh, involved in energy development and production in uh, Africa, in many mm -hmm. parts of Africa. I think they're in uh, uh, Ghan, uh, that former uh, colony of uh, Portugal there. Uh, Ghana? Uh, Ghana? No, no, no. Uh, that's in the western side of uh, Africa. Uh -huh. And then uh, they're also in uh, Nigeria. They have plenty of interest uh, in, uh, in Africa. Why can't we not deal with them, with China? We, can, we are in this region. We, realistically, we, we cannot ignore China. We have to deal with China. Instead of making China as a foe or irritate China, why don't we befriend China without surrendering our rights? We befriend China because we are Orientals. We understand each other. And yung malampayo lang, hindi natin alam kung totoo yung mga ginagawa na kasosyo natin dun eh. Eh, that's yun. Well, uh, maybe I will just uh, ignore my critics. That's the best thing, Mr. President. So to uh, na lang derail, si me my, derail me from my official uh, uh, duties. And uh, I will just say that, uh, well, after talking to Senator Enrile, I... I, I, I you guys have become irrelevant to me. After all, Mr. President, you are only responsible to the Filipino people. Correct, sir. Yes. Sir. And uh, you are not responsible to any specific person for your foreign policy. Yes, sir. Yours is to protect the interest of the nation and its people in the best way you can. Sir, uh, you know, it's... it's, it's it's not worth it to, to say that uh, alam mo, they used to drive fishermen uh, fishermen uh, fishermen away from the fisher fox along the coastal uh, fringes of the Philippines <laughs> no nagtapos kami sir na nag-usap in mga, in mga visits ko sa China they allowed fishing uh, so they were allowed to enter except in some prohibited areas especially the lagoon there in the middle of the sea. Hinahayaan na lang muna na inanay nila tayo. They never did, did anything that was provocative or anything punitive against our fishers folk, our fishermen. Uh, I don't know now because uh, maybe the line is becoming clear that uh, uh, we are more, uh, not really forceful, but uh, a little bit uh, is stronger now in our, in our dealings with them. But I would like to assure, I said, I said to China, I assure you guys that uh, nothing of uh, a, a sort of a placing their arms against you 
even if we put our entire navy is there, we will not start a war because we cannot afford it. I was just being frank to everybody. And uh, China understood us. And that is why, there's no, I said when uh, I, the pandemic started, I knew, I knew right away the problem. The problem is we do not have it. We do not manufacture it. So I called uh, President Xi. Uh, Sabi ko sa kanya na, ano, uh, Mr. President, we do not have the resources. We have not reached that uh, sophisticated level of technology uh, to, to do a mass uh, uh, manufacture of vaccines right away. And even to find one, sabi ko, wag mo lang kami kalimutan. And he said, yes, uh, of course, we are friends. So he said, I'll send you. So the first vaccines that arrived in the Philippines were donated by China. And now these idiots in the other side, para bang sinasabi, lumunod, I kneel down before China because of the, I ask help from China. So I said, look. So totoo lang, so totoo uh, lang, Mr. President. Kagaya nung sinabi ko na na, pag kung di tingnan ninyo, ang, ang China, ang kino-question lang niya sa atin, yung claim natin doon sa West Philippine Sea. They do not question yung core territory natin na binakuran na natin under the Ong Cruz. Rine-recognize nila yan. Pati yung Benham Rice, hindi nila pinagkikialaman yun. Sapagkat sa kanilang paningin, against everybody in the, in, on this planet, they are the they, they discovered all of these islands themselves ahead of time, just like the, the Europeans discovering Asia and Western Hemisphere in the past. Yun ang kanilang position. Kaya, we leave the problem there and then talk to them uh, friendly in order that we can get a better deal with China. We have to deal with China. We cannot afford to antagonize China. That's my position, sir, ever since. So, ganito na lang. Ito yung pagpaghingi ko rin ng bakuna, inisyo, sabi ko, no, it's not, it's not, it's not wrong to express gratitude. Binigyan tayo ng wala, eh. Yung panahon na kailangan natin, binigyan tayo. Ano ba naman, tapos magkipagira ka pa sa panahon ito, wala ka nga ng bakuna, eh, bakuna lang. Tumba, tumutulong naman sila sa atin. Oh, yeah, that's, that's So, they, they are picturing me to be a traitor. Ano daw ako yung, uh, uh, I, I am a traitor to my country, and I, that's treason. Sabi, gusto ko magsalita dito ng ano, pero uh, difference. Nung panahon ni Trump po ba, eh, meron kayong nakuha na tulong? <laughs> Nung panahon ni Trump, <laughs> Ka, wala tayong makukuha dyan. Kami nga eh. 20 years po ako sa gobyerno ni Presidente Marcos. Panay second hand ang binibigay sa atin yung mga bulok nila mga barko. <laughs> yung si Korski natin, hindi nila binigay yun. Binili, binili natin yun. Pera ng Pilipino yun. Hindi nang galing sa bulsa ng Amerika. Let me, let me let you in sa pangyayari sir, sa presidency ko vis-a-vis -vis with America. One is early on, uh, we need uh, something like uh, so many Armalites, thousands, 23,000 I think for the PNP. Alam mo, hinold dyan ng Congress because they said that uh, human rights violator daw ako <laughs> and it will be used against my citizens. Matagal na lang, hindi, hindi lang ikaw po ang ginandyan nila. Si Presidente Marcos nga eh. Tsaka <laughs> yung helicopters ko, nag-order ako, tapos gusto kong ikakansila, but they, they, you know, they, they reconfigured the route of the, kasi nag-back nag out ako sa deal, but they we were able to succeed by selling helicopters to us. Bell helicopters, but made in Poland. 
So, kasabi ko kasi, you know guys, I am not uh, really begging you for these uh, choppers. If you cannot give it to us uh, uh, without strings attached, without any criticism, uh, I'll buy. Pero kung, kung iba sabi ko, I'll go to Russia and buy. So, yan ang sinabi ko sa kanila. And they softened. At eventually, pinadala nila yung... Uh, yan, yan ang problema sa... You know, one thing, the problem with uh, America is uh, human rights ka agad. The, the lobby is so strong that, you know, the State Department, the, the, the lobby, you know, the State Department is uh, inhabited by a cross-section of uh, different race. Uh, so, there's a conundrum of, you know, the discussions there. One, one high, uh, maybe high-level official comes from a Filipino stock would lobby for his country, and then the other one. So, hindi talaga natin maintindihan itong State Department. Uh, that's why I said, uh, you know, I, I would like to stay away from you. Nung panahon namin po, sa, nung panahon ni Presidente Marcos, I uh, requested for uh, a squadron of F-16s. Ayaw nila po magbigay. Mm -hmm. Basta sabi nila, tama na yung mga F-5s ninyo. Pati helicopters. Yung mga luma na helicopter nila ang binibigay sa atin. Kaya, nagpunta ako sa Connecticut. Doon sa fabrika ng Sikorsky. At uh, bumili kami ng Sikorsky. Pero ng Pilipinas. Hindi galing sa Amerika yun. Kaya pinagbayad natin. Nung araw, hindi nagbabayad ng renta ang Amerika sa base militar nila eh. Libre. Wala silang binabayaran. Kaya dahil dun sa karanasan namin, eh pinagbayad namin sila ng renta. Saka, nung presidente na si Cory, at uh, mag matatapos ng termino ng military bases, pumunta dito si Armitage, kina, kina, trinabaho niya yung extension, kinausap ako ni Armitage kung pwede natulungan ko sila. E sabi ko, hindi pwede may Richard. Ako, ang kaisa-isang opposition senator ni Cory, 23 ang senador niya. Bakit hindi niya maipasa yung extension? I have to take an opposition position. I will vote against the extension. Nung primero, kami lang dalawa ni Bobby Tanyada. Ang um, kan? Uh, against. Against okay. extension. Eh, sumama sa amin sila Joby Salonga, sila Maceda, sila Sotero Laurel, dami. Kaya naging dala, 11 uh, senators of Cory plus me made 12 to uh, terminate the military basis agreement. That they have uh, substituted it with another uh, rules system, uh, itong visiting forces agreement. Now, under that agreement, it is uh, was entered into by uh, Aquino again. It's up uh, for uh, renegotiation. And uh, that power belongs to the president. Uh, I should have an idea hearing from you what, what I should do. Kaya, ipaulit-ulit ako na iba yung gobyerno ng Amerika sa mga mama mamamayan ng Amerika. I-distinguish natin yun. If you are dealing with the government of America, you are dealing with the bureaucracy that talks about nothing else but their uh, core values and their national interest. Kaya human rights, democracy, I agree. Freedom, all that, all that. But sasabihin sa iyo, they are charitable to us, ang gobyerno nila. <laughs> Mas madidisappoint po yung mga, yung mga kritiko natin. <laughs> Just sa bagay na yan. So, uh, this may order now to the cabinet and to all, all and sundry, yung, ano, 
talking uh, for the government to reframe the discussing itong West Philippine Sea with, uh, with anybody. If we have to talk, we talk, and tayo-tayo uh, lang, and there is one spokesman, si Secretary Harry, you do it. We now get you get the what, picture. We, Mr. President, if I may suggest, we get what we can get from China on the West Philippine Sea, use it to strengthen our military capability and exploit Benham rice, Philippine rice. Uh, yes, sir. Benham rice is exclusively Philippine property. Yes, that's right, sir. I have made it clear to all, to the world, that I will not allow any intrusion there. Well, of course, the right to innocent passage is uh, everybody's uh, privilege. But to allow anybody even to just uh, try to exploit or to even to look, you know, I will not allow them to do that because that belongs, Philippine rice belongs to the Filipino people. All I can say, Mr. President, is we must do everything to avoid irritating China or giving China a reason to... Uh, be angry. Take uh, deal with our core territory because our core territory is very important to China. It's like a fence from from uh, the Kuril down to uh, Honshu all the way to Rokyu, Formosa or Taiwan to the Philippines all the way to Indonesia. That's the first line of defense of America. And they cannot penetrate that. The only way for them to get out of the West Philippine Sea is either they go up over Hokkaido and exit in La Perouse Strait, or they pass through the Strait of Luzon between Taiwan and Batanes, or they pass through, they go south and veer east uh, behind. Balabak and pass through the Sulu Sea to the Cel Celebes Sea. That's, That's why we must never give China a reason to attack our core territory. We That's have it. enjoyed the best That of, is the bottom line. We have the best of nothing relations. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, we have the best of relations now. We will not wait that. We will not wish that. Bakun tayo ng China from our northernmost island, Amyanan, all the way to Saba. Parang bako dyan sa kanila. Eh, bigyan mo sila ng rason para invade you. Ano magagawa ng Amerika? They will not risk a nuclear war they will with not. China for us. The next war will be fought on nuclear peace. Wala na yung conventional, sir. Wala if it na. is war against uh, big powers, it will be a nuclear war. And it will reduce this planet into a dry land. A vulnerable lead ng America. Yan ang yari na sa kanila yung pipeline nila. That's already a signal that there is some vulnerability on them. Tayo rin, we are vulnerable. If we irritate a country like China, we cannot patrol all our islands from the north all the way to the Sulu Sea. We are a porous country. Yeah, very porous. They were not able to, to guard the coastlines of the country. That's why the Americans were able to supply us with firearms in March of 1945 already. Eh? When the war broke out in 19... 41, December of 1941, the only time the Americans came to us to help us, the guerrillas I'm talking about, was the March of 1945. That's a period of agony for the country. MacArthur abandoned us. And then they wrecked Manila. They destroyed. The Japanese did not destroy Manila. It yes. was destroyed by the Americans. The heaviest bombing to occur in South Asia at that time was the, uh, when they bombed Manila to rubble. 
So, uh, I would like to just study very carefully with the advent or with the coming of uh, the renegotiation of the uh, visit